welcome to my next video. I'm going to be doing a sketchbook page today. I thought we could have a little sketchbook date together. So if you want to draw along, feel free. That would be great. I'm just uh, showing you some new pens I got here, which I did actually forget to use in the video, but oh well, it's all right. I can use them another time. They are very, very good though. I used them uh, a couple of days ago on another page. But today I'm using some gouache and some neo colours and some coloured pencils, Crayola, all the fun stuff. And I'm going to be drawing a cute little mouse with, I think it's oat or wheat, I don't know, something in the photo. Who knows? So I'm just starting off with a bit of pencil and I thought today would be a fun opportunity to talk about some... Some, just some stuff I like about sketchbooks, but mostly some tips that I have. Um, I filled a couple now and it's something I really, really love doing and I really learned quite a lot in this sketchbook so far about it being a place that I can just explore and have fun and not worry about it being anything too special and just having it for me, I suppose, to try new things and draw things that I like and if I want to make the pages pretty I can and if I don't then I don't but I thought I'd share some tips that I've learned so far and hopefully they'll be useful to you as well. So the first one is to start anywhere in the book to decrease the fear of the first page. So sometimes when you get this nice shiny new sketchbook and it's pristine and gorgeous and you kind of think oh god what if I destroy it just start somewhere like halfway there's a pages in this sketchbook that I've like ripped out and drawn on you can always stick them back in as well if you if you decide to there's no problem with that but if you start a little bit further in hopefully that'll help you a little bit and make you feel like there's less pressure of getting it right immediately because it's hidden halfway in and if you're worried about then not being in order and you want to see your progress you can also just date it at the bottom if you like or anywhere on the page and then you can still keep track or you can just do one in the middle or you can start at the end of the sketchbook if you want whatever suits you i think i started a couple pages in for this one um and that really helped me and then went back and did the the first page at some point <laughs> But I, I personally find that can be really useful. And my second tip is to leave things unfinished so you can go back to them or just move on from them. If something's not working out, that's, what, what's, that's what's good about a sketchbook. If it's not working out, just, just move on. You know, you can leave it there. You can rip it out if you want. Do whatever you want with a sketchbook. I'd encourage maybe not to because you might find that you can work over the top of it. You can stick another piece of paper on top of it if you really, really hate it. But don't make yourself feel uncomfortable. If you don't want it in there, then it's your sketchbook. But um, I'd encourage you to yeah, leave things unfinished if you want to. If you're tired and you don't want to do any more of it, just leave it. You don't have to finish it. Or you can come back to it later. Or you can come back to it in 10 pages time. I've already got, um, well I think I'm about halfway through this sketchbook, I've already got two pages that I haven't finished. One of them's uh, some line drawing of a shop, I think, and I haven't coloured it in because I just don't want to and feel so un uninspired with it, so I'm just going to leave it. Another one is a background for a collage, and I probably will finish that one, but I've just not had the motivation to do so so it's there waiting for me and that's okay and I think sometimes this can take the pressure off a little bit because sometimes we get demotivated sometimes we don't want to draw what we thought we might have wanted to draw and that's okay so just just leave it start on the next page if you're inspired to draw something else no one's gonna tell you off or anything just do what you want and then my third tip is to draw things that you actually like. Of course it's good to practice things that you might not like but for me my sketchbook is a place of joy so I want that to reflect stuff. 
and like the things I maybe don't like to draw, I have in another sketchbook. I currently have three on the go, four if you count my university sketchbook. But this is my explore sketchbook, and this is my happy place, this is where I relax, this is where I just draw things for fun without any pressure. I then have a book that's full of studies, and that's where I put um, observational drawings and uh, drawing things that I want to learn and get a bit better at, things that I maybe don't like, things that go for the mega study list I told you about in my first video. I think it was my first one. No, my second one. Um, and then I have a third sketchbook which is just full of sketches, thumbnails, scribbles, all that kind of stuff. It's my traditional messy one. So you can do this if you want. Your sketchbook can be whatever the hell you want it to be. Like, don't listen to anyone who says, no, your sketchbook has to be really messy and rip all the pages up. If that's good for you, obviously do that. That's still wonderful. I have a place for that as well. But your sketchbook can also be beautiful and pristine if you'd like it to be. Don't, don't let anyone tell you that it can't be. I think as long as you do have a place to sketch stuff out and get those bad drawings out of your system so you can improve, that's fine, but not everyone is on this journey to be some amazing perfect artist. For some people it's just a hobby and if that, if your hobby is just making things pretty in your sketchbook, go for it. So you know, just draw things that you want to and things that you like and enjoy. I'm drawing this mouse because I really like woodland creatures, I love nature, I love things that are cute and small, so I'm drawing it. I'm not going to draw a race car because I, I don't really like cars, I don't have an interest in them and I think they're boring. But if you love cars, oh my god, fill a whole sketchbook with them, that's wonderful. But if, you, if you're constantly drawing things that you don't like just for the sake of trying to improve, you won't because mentally you're going to be reluctant to draw them. So keep those for another time if you do want to improve on them. But make sure you're looking after yourself too and draw things that make you happy. God, I went off on a tangent with that one, sorry. Anyway, my fourth and final tip for now is to let go of pressure. A sketchbook is personal and can be whatever you want it to be. I kind of covered that in my last tip. But, you know, don't let anyone tell you what it can and can't be. That's honestly, I think, one of the most important things whatsoever. Something that I think it could also be good is you don't have to share your sketchbook if you don't want to. If you're scared of what people might think of it, you know, maybe don't be, but I know that's really hard and I feel like that sometimes. So don't show it to anyone. You don't have to. It can be private. It can be your own personal diary. You do not have to show it to anyone. But if you'd like to, then that's great as well. You could always just share one page. You could share the whole thing if you want to. But make sure that you keep it for you and your own rules. I think that's really, really important. So that's my four tips. I'm sure I have more probably to say at some point, but those, those are the things that are most important to me personally, and I hope that they can help you. So right now, I think, I can't remember what I was doing here. Oh, I was just doing the gouache layers. So I did a painting on the previous page and you might have seen it just at the beginning of some mushrooms and it was one of those moments where I felt I'd like leveled up, I'd gained some experience because I'd been stuck for a little while and in the last few months I think I've really found things that make me happy and ways of drawing that are really really fun to me rather than them being perfect all the time or trying to get them perfect and pristine. So I've had a lot of fun recently being a bit more messy and scribbly and just having fun and just drawing intuitively and not thinking too much and if I want to put a green scribble in the background I will and I do in a few minutes time and that has been amazing so that mushroom painting that I did was really great and I wanted to do a similar technique again so I could practice it and also because it was a lot of fun so what I do is I do a sketch with colour pencil first and then I do um, some gouache layers on top 
I know people say gouache and I think that's the proper way to say it by the way but I've grown up saying gouache because that's what one of my teachers said so I'm just gonna say that and if it's wrong then we'll just have to deal with it unfortunately but if it is really really wrong then I'll stop you just have to tell me <laughs> so just above my hand there you can see a palette that I made it's just a little one um, because I really love using gouache but I have little tubes and I'm lazy and I don't always want to get out all the colours and mix them. Oh my god I just can't be bothered especially if I'm just doing something in my sketchbook. So I made this palette with some of my favourite colours from the collection which is the Arteza 60 set which I recommend. It's a very good um it's not like the highest quality thing in the world, but I really personally like it. I think the only thing that's not too great about it is the um, like archival quality, the light fastness. Um, so it, you know, don't hang it in direct sunlight, but this is in my sketchbook, so I don't care. It's fine. But other than that, I really recommend it. The colours in it are really, really good. So I added those to my palette. They're not exactly standard colours. But I wanted colours in it that I personally really like using. Um, like that pale purple, that is so nice. I think it's mauve or something. And it's just such a nice colour to use, almost like a brown. So I added that in there and it's fun. So yeah, I'm doing the gouache layer now. And I have really been liking adding backgrounds. Because normally I feel like I would just leave this how it is. Or I'd add some kind of basic shapes in watercolour, something like that. But I've really been enjoying like actually colouring in the background or giving things a dark background so the image in the middle stands out. I'm gonna sound pretentious now, but something I've really been focusing on lately, especially with some of my university work, is um, mood and emotion of the piece, which sounds a bit silly, but it does help. I'm thinking more about how things make me feel when I make them rather than just making them for the sake of it. I like having purpose and it pushes me forward. So when things don't have a purpose, I feel no desire to make them or motivation to. So even with things in my sketchbook, the purpose of this was to make a video, but also to relax and make something calming, something that reminds me of spring and something cute and that's what I focused on here and I love this sage green and it makes me happy and it reminds me of the lush outdoors so that's what I'm doing this bit uh, takes a while but it's worth it <laughs> on the on the mushroom image that I did on the, the previous pages I used a really dark uh, brown mixed with red um, and I think that looked really cool so I wanted to try a slightly lighter background this time to see if I could still make it look just as nice because I didn't think a really dark background would suit the image here which is why I didn't do it. I did think about it, I thought oh, maybe I could do a dark purple and I think that still would have looked nice but I definitely, I definitely like this green a lot more and I like that I'm thinking about my decisions. I'm telling you the whole inner workings of my brain, but we're on a sketchbook date, so you've got to get to know how my art brain works. Maybe. Maybe that's creepy. <laughs> oh look, some zoom ins. Not many, uh, because I really got into the zone with some of this, so a lot of the different angles that I've been trying to film more of, I completely forgot to do until about this stage, so I'm sorry that you've missed. Um, nicer, nicer videography. Is it videography? Is that the right word? It doesn't matter. But there's, there's more to come, um, because there's still quite a lot left to do on this picture. I've still got to get my coloured pencils out and everything, so don't worry. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I, I'm liking it. I'm liking what I'm doing here. I was going to do another page for this video as well, but I thought if I keep it at just this one, I can talk about um, exactly what I'm doing and not have a really fast sped up video because 
I sometimes don't like it when it's just a speed paint and everything zooming uh, miles, miles and miles per hour so I thought this would be just a little bit nicer and a bit softer to watch and I thought since it's about 20 minutes that gives you enough time to maybe do a little bit of light sketching yourself. Maybe if you're watching this video you're then going to put another one on afterwards that's like similar content so that might be nice and you can have fun. Oh, so this discovery, I don't know if I talked about it in my last video, I might have done but these Crayola coloured, like, what are they called, wax crayons? Oh boy, I love them. They are so nice and they were so cheap. Kids art supplies are just becoming my new favourite thing because they're so bright and colourful and silly. And they look so good because I like making things that are bright and colourful and silly. And they're not the most, um, obviously they're not the most amazing quality, but that's not necessarily what I need them for. I'm not making a masterpiece here but look look at that fun little squiggly textures in the background I'm just having fun I'm not thinking about it the neo colors I'd say are the fancy adult version of like crayons really and they are very good but honestly if you're looking to just add some fun texture to your artwork get some get some crayons honestly the little set I have uh, you can see the swatches for it in the top uh, left corner, no, top right corner, um, and I think it the set is called something like Colours of Happiness, something like that, um, and it's so good, the colours are so nice, and they're very summery and fruity, and I'd recommend that more than the standard colour set, just because I think the colours go together a, a bit more in an, in an arty way, <laughs> but honestly try it out, they are so good. Maybe not, they're not as nice on their own, like in isolation, but if you use them on top of things like this, I think they look so good. I was inspired to get some actually from um, Casey Golden. Um, she's also on YouTube. She's great. Um, and she does quite a lot of crayon videos where she'll buy a bunch of different crayons, different types, and make some really cool art piece with them afterwards. And I was just thinking, you know what, I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna see what I can do with these and I'm so glad that I did because they are so good and I think I might get some more. Also, bonus, super cheap, so cheap. That whole box was three pounds, no, it was it was three pounds, amazing. And those markers you saw at the beginning, they were also Crayola and I got those on sale for three pound fifty and you can see the colours at the left there. Um, Again, this is me forgetting to use them. I got them out and everything, and I thought, oh, if I put the swatch sheet there, I can think about the colours I want to use if I do something else. And I just never, I never did. So maybe you'll get to see me use those in a future video, and that would be great. But I highly recommend, lots of fun. Look, and now onto some nice tasty zoom ins. Ooh. And I'm just using a colour pencil here. It's, I think it's the colour red violet, I want to say. That sounds right. Um, I'm enjoying using colour pencils for line work. I just like how soft it looks. I've really gone off using pen at the minute. Um, I'm sure I'll come back to it, I always do. But yeah, oh, just using this burgundy coloured pencil. Really enjoying it. So nice, recommend. Oh look, and you can see all that crayon texture. See, they're so good. They're so nice. I was going to originally do this with different coloured line work, but um, I'm not liking that as much. I really like doing that for digital artwork, but not so much with traditional stuff. I think this works quite well because it stands out, but also because the red violet is already present on the, the image already in little amounts with that um, dark purple that I used and the bits of red. So I think it works really well, but I'd, I'd quite like to do something with a really dark blue. I think that would be really fun. Maybe like a forest. Ooh. Hey, I'm getting inspired. Look at his tiny little face. He just wants to eat some oats. Do you think maybe he's got some porridge on the go at home? 
and he's out of oats so he's picking up more anyway I think that I'm almost finished with this so I hope you enjoyed it I really really did and I hope you got some lovely artwork done at the same time and if you didn't and you just sat here listening to me ramble on I hope it wasn't boring to listen to <laughs> and I'd love to know if you um, wanted more sketchbook dates but also what other kind of videos you'd like to see from me I'd love to make more and sometimes I feel a bit stuck and I'm not too sure what to make so if there's anything in particular you want to see or if you have any questions maybe we can do some kind of Q&A situation that would also be great but I really hope you enjoyed it oh look at this oh lovely pink very nice anyway um, I'll be leaving you with some nice zoom ins of the sketchbook page so you can see it in its full spring glory and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye!